Hey, happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me. Thanks replay viewers for watching and YouTube, uh, YouTube viewers. Uh, we are working on For the Love tonight. Uh, this is block seven of the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along. Uh, the Quilt Along is 100 blocks. The first 20 are free. We are on, we have 12 done so far. I'm going back to some that I don't have finished yet, block seven. And uh, it's the first 20 are free and then the other 80 are from the book that will be coming out soon. So check out the Splendid Sampler for more information on that. And here is my block so far. Uh, we need to just stitch half of this piece on here. And then I would like to take out the template pieces. So hopefully we can get to that tonight. And that is the plan. So thank you guys for joining. Uh, if you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So thanks again for coming. Uh, we'll get stitching right away. Uh, it takes about a half hour to do a quarter of it. We've kind of figured out. So uh, hopefully we can speed that up uh, for the last half. And then we have time to cut open the back and pull out all the pieces. I'd love, love, love to get this finished tonight. Not sure if that's going to happen, but I'm really hoping so, guys. So thanks again for joining me. I'm going to flip you around. Let's get started. All right, so here we are. All right, getting situated here. So we have done uh, quite a bit on this. So we've, we finished the English paper piece and, and, and we've been stitching it on. So we have, I think this is our start point. We've gone around to here. So we have officially halfway, uh, we're halfway done with this. So I'm gonna keep going. Uh, in the past, we finished about a quarter, this much in a half hour or so. So I don't know, maybe we can finish this whole guy this evening. We already have thread ready to go here. So let's get started. Uh, let me know how your guys' day went today. We made more embroidery kits today. So just trying to stay on top of that. And, oh, you guys, just a reminder, uh, tomorrow I will not be here. So I will not be here for the release of the new Splendid Sampler 2 block, which I'm bummed about. But I will check it out and we'll work on it when, when I get back in town. So I'm going to be visiting my, uh, my in-laws for a few days. So uh, this is the last day for a little while and I will be back Wednesday of next week. So uh, if you guys are wondering where I am tomorrow, I am uh, just out of town. So uh, next week, Wednesday will be, be when I get back. So thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Just trying to wrap up all the things before we Head out. Okay, let's go around this cute curve again here and we'll we'll tuck in this little dog ear, cat ear, uh, when we get to it there. It'll be nice to see uh, the family though. I haven't seen seen them in a while. They live a little they live a, a bit farther than it is um, to see my parents, so it's it's a little tougher to see them. So it'll be nice. All right, tucking that flap in there. I want to speed through this tonight. Let's get in the groove and get this guy stitched up. So I'm, hold, I'm still holding that dog ear down kind of, and now I'm, I'm doing all the stitches that will kind of hold it in just around the outside of it. Ugh, I've been doing bills all evening, so my brain is totally frazzled. 
not fun. It's too late for numbers and math. That's why, that's why I like coming here, even though a lot of times this is numbers and math too, <laughs> but not for English paper piecing, so that's nice. Man, we had another gorgeous, gorgeous day outside today, though. I got to walk um, a little bit with the hubs outside, and it's that fresh, that fresh fall air where it's still, it's what you wish summer was, kind of. So it's still like a hot breeze, but the humidity is kind of gone out for it. So it's still out of it. So it's still like a really nice... Um, beautiful day, but just a hair cooler and way less muggy. It's just so lovely. Oh, Nolene, you have family in town for 10 days. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, this is definitely, yes, exactly, Gretchen. This is a nice break from all the Disney stuff, but fun numbers and math. Exactly, Debbie. This is, the quilting stuff is fun numbers and math. You actually get something uh, afterwards besides like a balanced checkbook. <laughs> Although it's satisfying getting my pile of receipts and stuff done and out of the way. <sighs> Thought I'd get it done before we, we head out. But boo. Glad I'm here. Rather it would be doing this. So that's, that's good. Oh man, I thought I, I thought for a moment, I couldn't see the corner of my fabric, so I thought for a moment that I accidentally stitched it in, but I, I didn't. <laughs> I've done that before, though. I do have to say, I think I still prefer this, doing all this stitching without these template papers in. I mean, they're a little in the way, these template papers, but I thought I'd try it this way where we leave the template papers in and then take them out later, but meh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a huge fan. Hey, Lorraine. Yeah, Phil's necessary evil, but boo! Ugh. I have not packed yet. We're leaving a little later in the day, so I figure I'll just leave that to um, tomorrow morning which usually I don't like. Usually we fly super duper early in the morning, so I don't have to think about anything. I just get up and go to the airport, but this time we have like almost a full day before we before we leave, so that's, that's a little odd for us. So I think I'll get up, I'll pack, and eh, probably finish the bills if I don't get them done tonight yet then maybe nap on the plane. That'd be nice. Oh, you're good. Linda, you're finished with hurricane prep. So this is a good break for me too. Oh, good. Man. Sending out some sparkles. Good sparkles your way. Gina, I, you know what? I haven't actually thought about that. I don't know if I'm going to take a project, which is odd. Usually I definitely take a project. You know, I might, I might take it. I might try and embroider, um, well, no, I don't know. I don't know. I might bring a book. Maybe I'll just bring my book instead. Uh, I don't know if I want to bring a whole crafting project. Usually I totally do. But I don't know. Just feeling like I, a nap in a book would be <laughs> would be good if I need to. I'm reading the, the Anna Green Gables books again, so that's just been kind of fun. but I'll have to bring some sort of craft thing, like some really small thing. Cause you never know, you never know if you're going to be stuck somewhere forever, especially with airplanes. So yeah, probably be smart to get a little project packed up too. It's a good, thanks for the reminder. That might be one of those things that I forget when I'm packing all the other stuff. So yeah, maybe just a, a small embroidery, embroidery project. Oh, I'm going to ultimately, Gretchen, I'm going to ultimately be taking these papers out. So, um, so I'm not worried about seeing the paper. 
Oh man, Pat, I love so many crafts, um, like knitting, crochet. Um, I, I just really, you know, and you know, embroidery, that's, we do embroidery kits and stuff. So always some embroidery and, uh, um, yeah, anything. And I just like learning new stuff too. And that's why I kind of like this Splendid Sampler 2 project because I keep getting to learn. And actually, I think that's kind of why I've been on this this quilting path for a little while is just, uh, or just like interest, this quilting interest for a little while is just because there's a lot, a lot to learn. And I just love learning new techniques and new, new things. Like they're all like little mysteries. So I, I like, that's why we've been doing a lot of quilting stuff lately. But knitting and crochet were always kind of like my go-to just chill and the, let the brain not think of anything. Um, craft, and actually I haven't done one of those in a while. I like uh, stitching or like knitting up some washcloths or something like that. I don't know. But I feel like maybe it's been a little while since I've done an embroidery too. We should, I should do one of those again. Yeah, you know what? Maybe it's time to start another little knitting project. You always take crochet with you. Yeah, so crochet's just that that would be a good easy travel thing. Maybe maybe I'll try and put together a little crochet project idea. Yeah, Pat, I'm totally with you. You fancy yourself a jack of all trades and master of none. Yep. That's that's how I feel too. For sure. But I've come to think that that is just fine. I'm interested in everything. Like I'm interested in, you know, all the different things. So it's all learning and it's all trying stuff. And, and I like that. And I know, you know, if you're just totally focused on, you know, one thing, like you're a master of something, you know, that realm, I think, uh, you know, there's always learning in whatever. So, I mean, it's just more, it's just in the less basic world of, of learning. But I like, I like, I like learning the mysteries of a class, uh, of a craft. So like, if something is just totally mysterious, like foundation paper piecing or something, for example, like how do they make these totally fancy quilts with all these pieces like it's magical you know what I mean and then you find out the technique to do it and it's like oh, okay I got it I, I understand the the magic trick um and uh, then I at that point I decide okay do I like this or don't I like it and then then I decide if I want to do the craft some more like tatting was a total mystery and then I then I um got a little kit to try and figure it out and had to watch a ton of YouTube videos, and that was pretty interesting too. But yeah, I don't, I don't need to do that. But yeah, like knitting and crochet, I kind of trade off between the two, but they both kind of have the same effect. Like I can just chill, chill out. And you know what? Maybe that's what I need right now. I need a little chill out time. So maybe I will try and put together a little, a little crochet project. You know what? I think I'm gonna do that. That sounds like a great idea. Maybe I'll start another, another doily. <laughs> you know, I really like, uh, if you've been with me here for a little while, you know, I like um, my grandma's doilies that she would always crochet. And every once in a while, like every couple of years, I'll crochet one of those. Um, maybe I'll do that again. Maybe I'll do like some little random crochet. I have some cute embroidery floss or like some thread. Maybe, maybe I'll try it with some like really little thread or something for no reason. I don't know what to do with the doilies afterwards. I just kind of have a stack of them. <laughs> uh, I don't really know if I like them as, as you know, in my personal decor. I actually, I, I'd love to frame some up cause I have, um, I have some of my grandma's doilies, so I'd love to do like a floating, like a frame where it kind of floats, 
and uh, um, frame one of her doilies and then frame one of the ones that I did out of all her all her threads and her needle and, and everything I'd love to or hook I'd love to frame that up and have like a you know like a like two them next to each other but never pursued that yet like getting that framed or figuring out how to frame it or whatever but yeah I don't I don't know what to do with them I just like making them you like the C to C crochet blanket because you don't have to, I'll have to, I don't know what that is. I'll have to look that up. Oh, that's interesting, Noeline. I could incorporate a few in a quilt block. Okay, I like that. Especially if I do them like super, with a super like fine little thread. Yeah, like a doily quilt. Huh. I like it. Maybe I will have to do that. Because I have a lot of, I don't know if you guys remember that sulky uh, thread. Um, that sulky, well, I think it's just 12 weight thread. So it's just, it's just kind of like a heavier thread. I was thinking it might be fun to try to crochet with that super fine little teeny thin thread. <laughs> And just have a little roll of that, so it'd be like this big, and my crochet hook, and I, and my pattern, and I just carry that around. That'd be the perfect, uh, perfect um, travel craft because it's tiny. I, I would have about this much. Well, and then the needle or the hook is a little bit long, I guess. Yeah, crazy quilt using lace and doilies. That would be neat. You know, I think it's actually it would be kind of interesting even to like make. I mean, this is, sounds crazy, but to like make the doily and then like cut it up so it fits the size of a square and then so you have all these squares that are different parts of the doily you'd have to sew it down to attach it and you know I don't know keep it from unraveling but that could be pretty interesting all right I like it I might have to pull that pattern out and and start start that up uh for the one that is my grandma's pattern the size is quite big like I would say maybe 24 to 30 inches in diameter and actually you know it, it mimics this it's like you know you start in the middle and then it goes out and out and it has these it's called a pineapple uh doily because it has like these little bits that come out and look they like mimic uh, they're kind of similar to to pineapples the shape of them so it's just this neat pineapple doily and and I love it so I don't know, maybe I'll make a, a photocopy of, of that and bring it with me. And the trick is just keeping track of what row I'm on that, that I'm not great at, especially like, you know, if I have to stop in the middle or something, but I don't know. You still use them, you have one, oh, you have one of your mom's framed. Okay, so that's what I want to do. Uh, that's what I want to do with it. Oh, for fun. Oh, and with the crochet hook, yes, so. Our law, that's what I have. I have my grandma's crochet hook and her pattern that she always used to do. She had a ton of doilies uh, that she made. And I suspect she just enjoyed making them too, like me. Like I don't, I mean, she, she put them all over, but you know, it's just relaxing to make, you know? I don't know what to do with all mine, but yeah, I would love to frame, frame a couple of them. I made one out of just scrap embroidery floss which was really fun to do because I mean it's all multicolored. it's like just tons of colors it was just all my scraps I had a whole kind of giant jar full of embroidery scraps and I used them all up in this doily but the bummer of that is that I had to I had to so I had to like weave in every single end so some of some of these scraps I could only do like three three stitches with it or three crochet stitches with it. So I'd have to weave in the end at the beginning and weave in the end at the, at the other side. So all of those tiny, tiny threads, I would have to weave in. And that was kind of a nightmare, but I do like, I do like how the piece um, turned out. So <laughs> I don't think I have enough scraps to do, to do that again for a little while, but yeah, I'd love to frame one of my grandma's doilies and then frame 
um, mine right next to it. I actually have some of her old threads too, and I've been I've been crocheting with her old threads. And that's always nice. So her old threads, her old pattern that she used, and her her oop, her crochet hook. But I think for travel, I think this time I will just take the crochet hook and uh, you know a tiny little thing of 12 weight thread. See how that goes. You have a friend who crazy quilts, hand sews, and hand quilts. Oh, with her grandma's doilies and lace hankies. Oh, that is interesting, uh, Noeline. And that would be, I bet you that's beautiful. Like, I bet you it gives it tons of texture to the quilt. You don't know how to knit or crochet, but would like to learn how to make dish towels. Okay, Linda, we've kind of, we've talked about that. Uh, I'd love to do a little knitting or slash crochet demo here sometime. So, you know, we always have these projects, but one of these days I would love to do like a little beginning knitting, um, knitting, a uh, little show here, a little series here. And the dish, a dish towel is totally what we would do. I love making dish towels. They're super useful and, you know, they don't take forever because it's just a little square. So that, that'd be fun. I, I, that's still on my radar of something I'd love, love to do here and I think this view like where you can see my hands like this I think it'll be a lot easier to learn than you know looking at photos or something where you don't have this view because this is as if you're doing it so you can kind of see see how it's done and and everything so that's I would love to do that yet we've been totally on this like quilting train for a little while but I love I love knitting and crochet and, and, uh, you know, uh, quilting is fun. All this piecing is fun, but man, crochet and knitting is where I go to just completely Zen out and not think at all. And my, I can totally preoccupy my brain with just counting stitches. And then that's, that's it. So that is my relaxation craft for sure. Both, both crochet and knitting. So I recommend it. Um, I, I give it a two thumbs up for giving it a try uh, just because if you get used to it, like if after you get going with it, it really does just, at least for me, it just completely chills me out. And if I have some anxiety or whatever and I can work on that a little bit, it, it, it's nice. Good, good tool for that. <laughs> Good tool for calming the brain a little bit. Oh, you used to knit, knit toys, Jennifer. Oh, like clowns. Oh, for fun. Is it hard to learn? Um, I think with both knitting and crochet, if you can get past the first row, then you're going to be probably fine. Yeah, knitting dishcloths are easy and cathartic. Yeah, they're easy. I mean, it is, it is, you know, you do have to get, you do have to kind of understand what's going on, like what you're looking at with the stitches and all that. But once you get in the groove, um, you'll you'll get it. So, I mean, it is easy once you get started. I mean, you can make it as difficult as, as you want. There's tons of different stitches and all that. But if you just keep it to the basics uh, and once you understand it, then it can be relaxing and easy. But, you know, give it a chance if it if it just seems really confusing and stuff when you start. Um, but it it can get fun and and cathartic and easy as you as you kind of figure it out. YouTube has videos to assist you in learning. Oh, oh, that's how you learn to to knit down. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, man, I don't know what, what we'd do with um, oh, YouTube. Crafting and YouTube go completely together. Oh, you still run a stall at the school fet? Oh, all handmade things. Oh, how fun, Jennifer. Oh, crocheted hanging tea towels. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good place to start. Yeah, something small and useful. That's why I like uh, dish class. So when I really want to chill out and really not think, I will get a big thing of cotton thread, which you can get, or cotton like yarn, 
100% cotton yarn, which they have at, you know, most yarn places. And I will knit dishcloths till I run out of yarn. And if I run out halfway uh, through the through the skein, I will I will start another skein and that washcloth will be two different colors. Oh, you used to make hanky boxes. Oh, out of old cards. Oh, that's kind of neat. My mom saves old Christmas cards and stuff. That would be kind of a fun project to do with them. Yes, and dishcloths, exactly, Arloa. Dishcloths are a nice gift, too. So, yeah, and a perfect, like, housewarming gift or a little Christmas gift. Just knit, knit or crochet, like, you know, four washcloths together and put a little, get some twine or some yarn and tie a little bow around them. And you could put, like, a pretty label on it or a little um, cute little decoration, like a little little flower or a branch and tie that on it. And then you have like this perfect little cute handmade gift of something that people will actually use. <laughs> or you guys, I have like this much thread left and this much to stitch. We're actually almost done the stitching. So man, what took us a half hour uh, or what took us uh, two half hours. So this took a half hour and this took a half hour in previous videos. We did all like the whole half in the same amount of time really here. So man, getting with the groove and just sticking with it is, you know, working for, for me tonight. So that's nice. So we'll, uh, I have a few more stitches and I think I'll have just enough thread, which will be awesome. Um, or I'll have just too little of thread, which will not be awesome. <laughs> but we're gonna try and make it work. But yeah, so we'll get these these backs out of out of the um, these templates out of here real soon, which I'm excited about. Like I said, I've never I've never done it this way before, where I keep the template pieces in the uh, English paper pieces in these shapes. Um, I haven't haven't done that before where I keep them in while I'm stitching it on. Usually I take them out, like I, I starch it, I uh, put some starch on there or some glue to just really hold the shape. And then I stitch it on right away. Um, this time I, I left the templates in because we have these little pretty curves and I thought taking the templates out would maybe ruin those before I had them stitched down, but I don't know. And I did it because I haven't done this before. So uh, it's always a good reason for me. <laughs> Try something new. Okay, let's tie a little knot here. Oops. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab the crochet hook and just a tiny little thing of 12 weight thread will make the teeniest, laciest little doily. <laughs> and uh, that will be a good enough project for me to chill out on on the plane or you know I don't know the bummer is I can't really craft in in a car because the car would be the perfect time to craft because we have a little bit of a drive when we get there um but I get a little dizzy in uh or a little like motion sicknessy if I'm doing stuff while someone else is driving. So I can't read in the car, which I used to do when I was little, and I can't really craft in the car because I just don't want to get all like nauseousy. Blah. So I can only craft on the plane, really. Um, all right, or actually if we're in the airport forever, so that's a good enough reason to bring it. So we got this all stitched down now. I'm gonna flip it to the back and I'm just going to kind of cut, I wanna cut this back away so I can pop out the thread. So just to make sure, I wanna kinda of pull, make sure I pull the fabric away from everything here. I don't wanna cut through the front. So I'm gonna just take my little embroidery scissors and just put a tiny, there, I put a, just a tiny cut in there and then I'm gonna get like my hardcore scissors cause I like them. A little scissors probably would be better here but I love this scissors. It's, it's that Kai scissors that's so, um, so buttery sharp. So I'm gonna trim, but I'm gonna leave like a hefty, like half inch seam allowance around here. I just kind of want to expose the those back bits a little bit. So I'm I'm gonna just kind of 
kind of stay away from the stitching as much as I can. Make a life daily to put under your spool of thread on your sewing machine. Oh, Linda, I think I missed what we're talking about there. Do you have to sew the back up? No, I don't have to sew this at all because we've stitched it on. So all I'm doing is cutting out excess fabric that isn't needed. So there's no harm in this at all. Some people actually like like do this on purpose all the time because then it, they're um, then they only have to like quilt through you know the one layer of fabric instead of with applique when you have like a bunch of layers of fabric. But yeah, so there we go. We cut out the back and now we can see the back of our paper pieced guy before we stitch it on. So now we have access to all of the template pieces. So what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to use my little stiletto. We'll start with the middle. And if you remember uh, when we did the English paper pieces, the, this is just a little postcard that we made all the pieces out of, but I put a hole punch in each of the pieces before I glued them down. Like, yep, there's that other hole punch, just a little circle. And that's going to help me pop them out. So we did glue these edges down and uh, um, I'm going to just uh, kind of rub my, just the stiletto. You can use a pin or a needle, but I just like it sturdy, the stiletto. So I'm just going to kind of drag it underneath my seam allowances. And this, all I'm doing is kind of lifting up that glue. See, so we're kind of glued, glued right there to the paper. I just want to help shimmy that glue off. Then I'm just going to stick my uh, stiletto in that hole and I should be able to pop out that template. And I might have accidentally stitched through the edges a little bit so you want to be careful but this is all we're going to do. We're going to keep popping out our template pieces and we're going to be left with just our fabric. See so now you can't see that piece behind there anymore and the whole thing is going to feel like like fabric again. Right now it feels like a postcard but uh, it will feel like fabric in soon. I might need to cut a little bit more off here, but let's see if we can do it without that in. So I'm gonna kinda try and, we're gonna do some surgery here. I'm gonna try and just get up in here to release some of that glue along the edges. If if it's having a problem, it might come out without me doing this, but it doesn't hurt to kind of release those edges. And let's find that, that hole there. Let's see if we can pop this guy out. I might need to trim a little bit more. There we go. If I can get a little edge out like this, then, then we should be good. Oop, the glue's wanting to hold it. So let's find where it's glued. Some people wet this a little bit and the wet wetness releases the glue a little bit. You know what, I'm gonna get up in here a little bit more. So around those curves, around those curves here where we glued really good. That's where my glue is wanting to hold a bit more. So I just need to pull those up. We've stitched it with a ton of little stitches to the back. So me putzing around back here shouldn't harm the front at all. Come out. There we go. I might've accidentally stitched, um, stitched the paper to it a little bit, but there we go. That piece is out. So there's our first piece and our curve is still perfect. It is fabric again. Yay. All right, again, I'm gonna have to get up in here a little bit more. Might as well snip all these a little bit. Instead of trimming like way close, I'm just putting these slits in so I can open it up a hair. Just release, we're just releasing the tension of the fabric a little bit. So you gotta be sure that, you know, when, I, when I'm sticking the scissors in here, I'm trying to really make sure I'm not accidentally cutting the front. Oh, because you sewed the paper edge. Yes, yeah, so I'm having a little hard time with that too, Gretchen. So 
sometimes when you're sewing the, if you're sewing with the template in, and I've noticed this with um, other English paper piecing, it can be a little difficult. Like if I'm sewing this line right here, sometimes I'll accidentally catch the template, not just the fabric when I'm sewing all those little stitches and those um, take a little energy to pop out because it's being held by a little tiny stitch. So you kind of have to pull, you have to kind of break the paper for, away from that little stitch. So it can be a little bit difficult, but if you can get one little bit, then, then it's a little easier. Yeah, like see here, I think I sewed the corner in, but there we go, popping out, wiggle it a little. Might have to tear your paper. But yeah, I mean, you can kind of see on here where I've where I've nicked it a few times, um, sewing, sewing through it. But you know, just going slowly around this guy, and it's all gonna come out. But yeah, putting that little hole in the middle with a with a uh, hole punch is super helpful when you're popping these guys out later. There we go. That one was easy. Let's see how we're doing here. Oh, I, I must have moved. I, I'm like, I thought I did more than this, but I did some down here. Some use, people use a wash away applique paper that you can leave in. I have not tried that, Gina, but that would be kind of a, a neat deal. So the thing, uh, the thing is, this is a little different. I'm curious about that because this is a little different than just applique because we need kind of the stiffness of, you know, for example, like a plastic template or, you know, we used a postcard here. You kind of need that stiffness for English paper piecing to really get, um, you know, a nice edge on your shapes. So I suspect that, um, I suspect that that applique paper might be more designed for, you know, like applique, like the bird we just did um, that we finished yesterday. Like that, I could see it being beneficial, like you using applique paper. And then, you know, if we did that needle turn and then that just like disappearing in the, in the wash, that'd be kind of amazing. But for English paper piecing, you do kind of want this nice stiff, uh, stiff edge here to help. Oh, that, this one's coming right out. Good. Oh, this one was one of your least favorites. Yeah, Ar Arloa. Yeah, that's that's kind of the interesting thing about the Splendid Sampler, um, or in this case, the Splendid Sampler 2. It's a little of everything, which is great if you're learning or if you want to get better at, at a technique. Um, but, like, if you're just learning, it allows you to try something, and then you can be like, yeah, not for me. <laughs> or... Eh, kind of like it, but need a little bit more practice, or maybe there's some weird tip out there uh, to make it a lot easier. But yeah, you get a, um, you might be really good at one technique, and you, like you might be the pro at that technique, but then there might be a completely different block that comes along that um, you're just more meh about. But wouldn't you like to know that you're meh about that block? Uh, before you decide to do a whole quilt with like 30 of those blocks in. <laughs> That's a nice benefit of this. You're only doing the block, you're only doing the block once, and then you can move on. And if you want to do another quilt with like six of those blocks in, feel free. Oh, you did it with foil on the bird. I wonder, oh, it was wonderful. So that, that went, uh, that went really well with the bird. Oh, that's good to hear. That's a technique I'd like to try yet with, um, with applique. So maybe our next applique one. I'll try the, that foil method. I didn't really. There we go. Come on, guy. There, just popped it out on the edge. I think we have a few more in here. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, yeah, we got this whole, this whole area. Oh, that just comes out a little bit, I think. 
You'll love it, the, the foil method. Okay, I will definitely try it. I've seen video of it um, just for circles. I haven't seen it done with other shapes, but yeah, it'll be, be interesting. Interesting to try. Definitely want to try it. All about trying new techniques out. Then you can decide what you like and what you don't like. All right, and one more here. Come on, dude. There we go. Ah, there. Okay, I think that is it. So I could actually trim these a little bit more, but I think we'll just leave them as is. Yeah, we got it all out, but see how it just relaxed? Uh, like it's not so stretched across these little shapes anymore. So man, it looks so much prettier all of a sudden. I'm gonna turn my iron on here quick. Um, we'll give this a little press and then we will trim it out. And man, we got this guy done like a half hour faster than I thought we would tonight. So that is awesome. But yeah, see, so now you won't have to quilt through a whole nother layer of fabric because we've, we've trimmed that away. Um, but yeah, it's so much prettier now all of a sudden and the um, bits around it relax a little bit too. So I don't know, maybe there's something to stitching uh, it with the templates on first. I think, I think it was able to be laid on here or like I didn't have to think so much about how I'm like grabbing, how I'm, how the back fabric is like getting sucked in. I didn't have to think about that as much with the template pieces in there. So that's something. Um, all right, I'm gonna give this a little press and then I got my, my cutting mat. We will trim this, trim this to size. So I, I think this was on a seven inch square. So we still need to cut it to the, uh, cut it to the, um, the six and a half inch. But let's give it a little happy press first. But yeah, I'm really happy with how all these curves came out. That was kind of, for me, the unique thing about this block. I've done English paper piecing before, but never where there was a curved on, you know, an exposed edge. So that was kind of interesting. Let's just give it a press on the back here too. I mean, this is going to get all crinkled up to later, so I guess I don't need to have it super pressed, but I do want the background to a little nice. Let's leave it there, uh, and then let's uh, give it a little trim, trim it to size. Get my little rotatey cutting mat, because I love him. Okay, so we need to kind of center, center this guy in here as best we can. I wonder what a good way to do that is. So while we do, we do know that these guys are center, so we can just put this on like what the, the three, the three and um, a quarter inch line. So they're three and a quarter, three and a quarter for those two diamonds three and a quarter and three and a quarter to those diamonds. And that should do the job right there. If the diagonal is looking okay, I think we are pretty decently centered. One, two, three and a quarter. Okay, always gotta count. All right, I think we're good. I'm gonna put some pressure on here and there we go. more. This is barely going to clear the quarter inch mark when we sew it in. So our points are going to go really close to close to the edge once it's in the quilt. Yay, it looks so much cleaner and happy. 
Woohoo! Okay, you guys, that is another one done. I kind of like it with the flower going up a little bit. Pretty. Yeah, we got we got all of them out of here. Yep. Woohoo! Okay. Yay. So next time I think we will, I'll be gone for the new block. So we will work on, um, when I get back on Wednesday, we'll work on whatever tomorrow's new block is. Cause I won't, I won't have worked on it for the week. And then we'll get the next new block on Thursday when I'm back. Um, and eventually here we will work on this white sashing. So yeah, I want to put white sashing with a tiny little square cornerstone at all of the corners. And then we will start doing our quilt as you go. So I want to, I just want to pick four because now I actually have nine done. Whew, I'm on a roll. So I have nine done now. Um, but I want to put four together with little sashing and that little cornerstone square. And then an, another one separate that's four together with the sashing and the cornerstone. I will quilt both of those pieces with the middle and the back. And then I will put those two together using the quilt as you go, one of the quilt as you go methods. So that's that's what I'd love to do next. I want to just be having this with the quilt as you go. I can, it's like I'm finishing the quilt as I'm still working on it, which is kind of awesome. So, all right, I'm going to flip you guys around. We'll call it an evening. Hello, hello again. So here we are. Oh, it's really pale from, from back there. That yellow kind of fades in. That's kind of fun though. I like it. I like that. Um, uh, all of it is, is very pale, but you know, this would be like a light color in any other quilt, but in, in this quilt, it's kind of one of the dark colors, isn't it? Which is kind of interesting, but yeah. Oh yeah. You know what? We fussy cut those little flowers. I forgot we did that. So yay! Another block done. Super stoked. Uh, so, all right, you guys, just a reminder, I am gone until next Wednesday. So uh, this is the last day until next week, Wednesday, when I'll be back. I'll be visiting the in-laws and uh, maybe I'll be just crocheting a doily. <laughs> if I do, I'll show you my progress on that as I go. Because uh, that'll be fun. That'll be a good chill project. I need one of those. So awesome. I will catch you guys when I get back. Um, I, I'll probably be on Facebook a little bit, so I'll check out the Penguin and Fish Crafters group and chat, chat with you guys there. And then I'll see ya. I'll see ya on Wednesday next week. Have a great uh, rest of your week, and I'll see you then, guys. Good night.